So Aisha Curry and uh, Sonya Curry, who's Steph Curry's mom, were out in Paris. Mm -hmm. And from what the from what you can tell from the video, they were trying to get back to like their car from wherever they were coming from, and they had a run in with police. And Draymond Green actually was involved too. So let's listen to the clip. They won't let us go back over there where we came from. They won't let the driver come here, and they won't let us go back over there. Let us get to our car. That's it. So even after him hitting the baby in the head, there's still nothing y'all can do to get them out here? Where were they at, and who was asking for help? So... I don't know exactly where they were, but they mm -hmm. were on the streets of Paris. Um, I, and maybe they were leaving like an event from the Olympics or something and trying to get to their trucks, like their cars. Mm -hmm. They have a translator guy with them. In the beginning, Draymond Green is not even in the video, so he's not with them. Um, and you hear that Sonya Curry, Steph Curry's mom, like, because paparazzi is out there, like, Sonya, Sonya, Aisha, Aisha. And they're calling them because they're trying to get video shots of them. Mm -hmm. And she's like, stop calling our name, come help us. Because the police are basically stopping them every time they try and get to the car. And um, why though? Are they just hating because the USA beat France in the finals? I mean, people in the comments were saying that, but okay. I think what I, from what I witnessed in the video, it was giving that uh, I guess police officers and officials had blocked off certain streets, mm -hmm. so they weren't letting people walk to where they were trying to go. But she's like, "Our car is there. We came from there." So the translator is trying to calm it down. He's like, "They apologize. They apologize. They apologize." But in the opening of the video, you hear Steph Curry's mom say. You don't touch a baby. You don't touch a baby. When she's talking to a certain police officer. Where the hell was Steph through all of this? I'm not for, I'm not sure. Uh. And then eventually Draymond Green comes up and you hear Draymond Green in the video say, so wait, because Aisha tells him what happens. And when you listen to Aisha, she says, they pushed me and <gasps> then they didn't know that I had the baby because the baby is strapped to the front of Aisha. So Curry. Draymond was ready to punch somebody right then and there, I'm he, sure. He was, I mean, listen. He, I, he had to remember he's in another country. He was given the energy that should have be, should have been gave and people give him so much like, you know what I mean? They be, they be mad at Draymond for a lot, but he was like, yo, y'all hit this baby in the head and y'all can't even take them to their car. She's literally telling you where the car is at. Mm. So this video, as you can imagine, has been blowing up all over social because people always talk about how they feel like, you know, people over there in Paris are rude and they're turning into like a racist thing. It's, it's like a lot of commentary online around this, so. Okay. But Aisha was visibly crying. She was really, she was upset. It progressed as the video went on, but she was upset. So um, up next, another like, Kind of like a sad video. Why um, are you making us sad on this Monday? Nothing? I don't know. I like, just thought about it. I'm like, wow. I took a shot to start my morning, and now here I am. All which, this what are you stuff. going through? That you got to drink alcohol first thing on a Monday morning? I was tired, man. It was a long weekend. And then I knew I had to deal with you, so. <laughs> what? I just, don't I blame felt, me for your alcoholism. I, I thought Envy wasn't going to be here. and he He's the brighter side of the day. Because <laughs> he's light-skinned? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. I didn't even, yeah. Wow. Okay, we're going to go. Okay, so Black Sam sat down with um uh, Big Boy um for a Big Boy, uh, like he does like his own like sit down interviews on his YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And you know, Sam, Nipsey Hussle's older brother, he doesn't really talk to the media whatsoever. So this was one of the first times I've ever seen him actually talk about the day that Nipsey was shot. Sunday, um, it's regular Sunday, man. We had, a, we, you know, we had spots in the hood. So one of the spots we saw, we had a little weed spots. I think I was in it all night. And so my goal was to go to the house and uh, sleep a couple hours. So I'm at Granny's house, sleep on the floor. This phone just going crazy, man. It woke me up and I picked the phone up. Forget who called me, man. I just hear people screaming in the background and they like, man, you know, bro got shot. So I just immediately just run out the house and I get there and everybody's screaming and I, and I just see bro and I'm just, just f up. But bro still breathing. Finally, you know, police came and ambulance came and um, they took him. And so I'm just praying, you know, I had a lot, I had faith that uh, bro was gonna be all right. You know, I'm like, man, if anybody make it, bro gonna make it for sure. Man, yo, so always sending Black Sam and his family nothing but positive energy, love, and light. I've never once heard Black Sam tell that story. Ever. No, no, I, I mean, I've heard him tell the story before, you know, off air. But when you hear it, I've never heard him tell that story, and, and I don't feel the same way. Meaning, like, it, you, you can just hear the trauma. He couldn't get through it. He, nah, was, he was man, actually, he no. was crying. Every, um, every single time. Can you, yeah. can you imagine? Uh, well, I... 
so my brother's alive, but I my my brother was shot before, so when he was talking about, I was crying with them because mm-hmm. I know what getting that phone call is like and rushing to it and and I, I just, wow, like I didn't know that like he was, like when he got there, Nipsey was still breathing. I didn't know a lot of that yep. stuff, so it was. And just, can you imagine the helplessness he felt in that moment? It's like, what like, can like you there's do? there's nothing you can do except And you're the for older pray. brother, man, you know what I mean? And, and the whole interview man, was given, man, man, I'm our brother's man. keeper, you know what yes. I mean? And in that moment, it was nothing he yes. could do. Um, but then they get into the conversation um, about does you know Sam and his family think that this was like a random attack or what? Because that was a big thing when Nipsey passed away as well too. From my understanding, old boy walked up with no shirt on first to check the scene because he know what's he know what he know what's going on in that parking lot. Had a conversation, probably seen nobody was in the doorways. Checked hustle, had on shorts. Checked everybody else. Left. They say came back with a red shirt on, tiptoed through the alley, and went right and started shooting. So to me, that's premeditated. Number one, there's no red shirts in the hood. You can't buy no red shirt. No, no liquor store sell no red shirt. Number two, when it come through the alley with a red shirt, that's the throw off or the bloods did it. So for me, he felt he was supposed to he, he, he was supposed to do a job or somebody sent him or whatever, and he was nervous. He wanted to make sure he he he, he wasn't getting into a shootout. That's that that's my that's my thoughts on it. Man, it's been five years and Nipsey the the tra- the transition to Nipsey Hustle still hits different. It That's does. one of those ones I'll never truly, I'll never understand. Ever. I'll never, I'll never forget that. That was probably that was the first celebrity, um, like as a rep- as a journalist, that was the first celebrity death that I was like, I, I felt like, no, like I just wanted mm. to go and help him. The minute that I I got a call about it, I'm like, no, 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 this can't be true. Like it just, and 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 um, Big Boy talked about that too. Like you know, we see it from a media standpoint or just as friends of the family or whatever you are to Nipsey's family. But being his actual to Sam, family. yes, yeah. and it's very obvious that he's still dealing with. He even talked of about course. like when people come up and take pictures and want to take pictures with him because he's not into all that stuff. It, it kind of like brings back all of the like trauma from everything because that's just not what he's into. But he understands that he respects and he loves the fact that people love Nipsey. But it is hard for him to. I, I just listening to him discuss how his faith was shattered. Yes, like everything he believed in God, yes. he just didn't in that moment. Yep. And he said at one point he wanted to do drugs. Yep. Like that's just that's just all trauma, man. So yeah, yeah sending healing energy to Black Sam and his family always, man. Yeah. You 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 done depressing us? I am. I had a lighter note story, but we gotta wrap it up. You don't do lighter note story, please. You do. You hate the lighter, huh? <laughs> wow. Just, nothing bright. I do actually, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Everything dark and evil with you. It's just it's dark and evil. Or it doesn't fly. <laughs> black effect. All black. What's wrong with black? Black is beautiful, ma'am. Oh, I know. Okay. I'm all right. Glistening. Now we got front page news coming up next with Morgan Wood, and after that, Juvenile and Manny Fresh will be here to talk 25 years. Of back that ass up. Okay, lighter notes, Lauren. Lighter notes. I've been backing it up for like 32. <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.